Okay, we are back and ready to dive straight into some software and thermal stuff with this XX70E-I7950X ITX build. <sighs> it's a crap ton of letters and numbers. So just a couple of things before that. Since part one, we have swapped out the Noctua PPC fan that I had slapped in the top forward spot up here with two Noctua Slim fans populating the top slots up here, providing a much better bottom to top airflow. This is actually pretty tricky to do because Cooler Master uses a proprietary rubber bushing and push pin style mounting system that only works with normal 25 millimeter thick fans. I ended up designing and printing some custom bushings to allow me to use normal fan screws. These bushings were also necessary because the mounting surface where the fans sit against the lid, it's not like a nice smooth surface designed for a fan. It's really designed to have that rubber bushing that they have from factory to hold the fan down a little bit. And without it, when I tightened up these fan screws, the whole top lid of this ended up like bowing into an arching shape. You'll also notice there's an additional 92 millimeter slim fan in the back here, and that's just to help get a little bit more heat out from the CPU cooler since it's blowing hot air at the motherboard and it kind of, it's kind of getting trapped in this back section. So the very first thing we want to do is quickly investigate any sort of fan control for the two tiny fans that are built into the motherboard, as there's a lot of discussion around that topic because they can be quite noisy. There's one fan on the VRM and there's another fan on the M.2 slash chipset heatsink. These fans always seem to go full speed when booting the system, even if the fans are set to off in the BIOS. And at the time of recording this video, I'm on the latest BIOS version 0809. We have some extremely limited fan control, full speed or disabled. Those are our only options. There's no way to actually do like a fan curve based on any sort of temperatures or anything. There is PWM mode, but that's just some sort of baked in algorithm in the BIOS that's controlling it. We don't have any control over it. And the chipset fan, which is the one that's also on the M.2 area, it's the same thing. It's full speed, you can turn it off, or you can leave it on PWM mode and there is some sort of automatic control over it. Not exactly what people who are spending $500 US are looking for when buying a premium product, I'm sure. I'd love to hear from you down below. If you have this ITX board from Asus and the fan noise has been an issue for you, maybe I can do a deep dive in a separate video exploring different solutions. Just because we don't have software control, there still might be a few things we can do as far as like hard modding or changing the fans. I can check this all in a separate video anyway if there's enough interest in it and if it's a wide enough spread issue. So with that quick bit out of the way, let's find out what happens when you slap a 7950X and a 3090 into an 18 liter ITX chassis. We have our system plugged into this watt meter here so we can monitor power during a couple different tests. I've done my best to kind of rig it up here with some duct tape so it stays somewhat in shot. In case I forget to talk about it, you should hopefully be able to read this. Remember, I'm nuts, so I slapped a 750 watt SFX power supply in this thing that's feeding all these powerful components. And we'll find out in a second if they can all just play nice or if it's gonna be an issue. Okay, so first up, Cinebench R23, multi-core, here we go. So right off the hop, boosting up to just a little over five gigahertz, drawing 310 watts. And then we hit that 95 C wall that AMD says is normal. And the speeds have throttled back to about 4.8. Our base frequency is 4.5 gigahertz. So we're still above our base frequency. Our power draw has dropped about 30 watts as we're sitting right on that 95 C limit. And Cinebench is done already. And it looks like we did a, a 35,920 for the score. So comparing that to other people's scores online I've seen for this chip, I've seen between 36 and 38,000 basically for a stock 7950X. You will get a higher score with better cooler and the longer that it can maintain that boost window. But it does seem that inevitably 95C is kind of what you'll hit with this chip. So that was Cinebench. So next up, we're gonna run Furmark, which is basically a power virus. So we'll see what happens to our 3090, chilling down here in the basement of this little setup. Yeah, we'll run the 1080p preset and we'll just see what happens. 507 watts, I just saw a spike up to there. And about 90% of the way through the test now, still sitting around 500 watts, so we're not being thermal throttled on the GPU. And GPU temperature is sitting at about 63 degrees Celsius. We scored uh, 18,225. I don't really know what's normal for 1080p on a 3090 in Furmark. So we'd have to do a longer test to figure out if this thing would ever thermal throttle. But the good thing is that it's not immediately just ramming into some thermal wall and throttling to all heck. Whatever I said, 63, 65 degrees Celsius on the GPU after 
a minute or so of 100% fur mark is, you know, it's okay. So doing some quick napkin math, we saw 300 watts roughly power draw in Cinebench and roughly 500 watt power draw in Furmark. So if we add those two together, that gives us 800 watts of power draw out of our 750 watt power supply. Let's, uh, let's run them both together. Worst case scenario, it shuts off and literally nothing else happens. Nah, I'm just messing with you guys. It's probably not a good idea to go out and actively try to overload your power supply because safety features like overcurrent protection are designed to be worst case backup plans. And if they fail, well, that's why we have a power meter. So we don't have to wait for it to blow up to know there was a problem. So anyways, let's see what happens here. Just run Furmark, arbitrarily run Cinebench continuously. And 681 watts. 670 watts. We're probably dropping a bit of power now because the CPU is getting hot and it's starting to dial back those clocks a bit. I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes and come back and see what I can report. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. Our power draw seems to be around 650-ish. CPU temp, hottest we've seen is 97 on CCD0 and 94 on CCD1. Going down to our GPU, core has never gone above 70.5. Our memory, hottest it's been at is 84, which is still fine. In our hot spot, the hottest we've seen it is 86. So this is like, as far as I know, this is kind of like a worst case scenario. And these temperatures are fine. So that was completely unrealistic and not at all how somebody who built a tiny ITX system like this might use it. So let's do some real stuff and figure out if thermals are actually fine for this. One thing one might find oneself doing with one small, white, sleek, overpowered PC such as this is video editing. So I have here loaded up the project file from the overview video we did on the X670E-I Strix board from Asus. Yeah, we'll just come in here and we'll just scrub around. You know, we're scrubbing through, we're looking at stuff, some on-screen stuff here. I don't think there's anything really visually demanding in this. Is there any fast-forwarded parts? Okay, here's a fast forwarded part. Let's do load up things a little bit more. Seen about 300 watts when playing back this, 310 watts playing back this fast forwarded part here. And if we look at temps, hottest we've hit so far is only 70, 78. The CPU usage is very low to the GPU really. It looks like it's getting hit here. Now I'd have to actually do some proper video editing, I think to get more conclusive results than this, but looks like it's working out all right. Hey, Steve, what up, my guy? Uh, so let's look again quickly. So yeah, 73 on the package for maximum for video editing. Again, I would have to actually do video editing to see if this is true, but it seems like totally fine for video editing. Let's actually do a, a final render of this. We'll just call this one test render. Sure, export. And we have seen a 95C result already. It's only been going for a couple seconds. It fluctuates so fast. It goes 70, 80, 90, 70, 90, 70, 90. Oh, 99, <laughs> just saw 99 Celsius on CCD zero, back right back down to 70. Basically what we're seeing is on average, the temperature is under 90 C and temperatures just seem totally fine. So another thing one might find oneself doing with one white, small, sleek, overpowered PC is 3D rendering. So here's an EVGA 3090 model I found on GrabCAD and we can use it to do a nice little CPU render. So yeah, sitting right at 95C again, CPU is loaded to a solid 100% and we're sitting at 4.75 gigahertz up from our base 4.5 gigahertz. Oh, 100.3, we just saw 100 degrees on CCD zero. Spiky little thing, this 7950X is like these temps are 50, 150, 70, like crazy all over the place. So we did see 100C for one split second. This thing rendered so fast, let's do it again. Yeah, so immediately a 98. We saw a 98 on there. CPUs just getting pinned, sitting at 4.75 again. So CPU renders are incredibly tough. They're so well optimized to just hit every single core and thread. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So we're seeing the same thing as in Cinebench where we hit 95C and pretty much stay around there. Okay, yeah, so I never expected to be able to hit the CPU this hard with this small of a cooler and this small of a case and have the CPU be anything other than 95C. But apparently this is fine according to AMD and this is what I was hinting at earlier. 
but also running cooler is almost always better when it comes to electronics and running the CPU at lower temps than 95C will, in my opinion, prolong the life of this chip to some degree, whether that be a few months or a few years, it just will. So what can we do about these 95 degree temps? Well, we do have a few options. Option one, we could use a bigger CPU cooler. However, in this small of a form factor case, that's not really an option. Plus, you can put a 360 mil AIO on this chip and still expect to see 95 degree temps when doing things like that 3D render on the CPU or Cinebench. Why? Well, in my opinion, it's because it's just hard to actually get the heat out of the cores of the CPU through the IHS. AMD decided to make the 7000 series IHS thicker to maintain the same Z height for CPU cooler compatibility from previous gen AM4 coolers. I know Derbauer is working on a DLID kit and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one and installing it on this exact setup so I can see what kind of potential I can unlock on the 7950X in a form factor like this. But until then, we can go with option two, which is undervolting. It's possible to use Ryzen Master and just dial back a few settings and voila, better temps and lower power consumption. So here I've locked all cores, all threads at 4.5 gigahertz, which is the base speed. And I've pulled the voltage all the way back to just 0.91 volts on the core. And if we do something like, I don't know, let's run Cinebench again. So we're still hitting the CPU 100%, but our temperatures now, 5960C on the core. Power consumption, 180 watts. I did play around with these settings a little bit to find some really good efficient settings. We just did a 33,284. So we're getting 92% of the same performance, or another way of saying it is our score is 8% worse in Cinebench. However, the maximum temperature we saw loading all cores and everything was 62 degrees Celsius. And also these fans didn't spin up full speed like they did when it was sitting at 95 degrees Celsius. Our power consumption, I think, is was about half, roughly. I think we were about 300 watts versus 180 watts and only 8% less performance. So just something to kind of think about there with that one. But Kyle, I just want a game. I don't want to mess around with any of that. Well, I have some good news for you. The third way you can improve 95 degree CPU temps on a 7950X in a small form factor case like this is just by playing video games. Games don't load every core and thread of your CPU over a sustained amount of time. So what we see is in games on a very fast CPU, the power draw being much lower as only a handful of cores and threads are spun up at a time to feed the GPU information and to do the processing of other things that aren't handled by the GPU in video games. Let's jump into a few games and show you kind of what I'm talking about. So there's some pretty wild coil wine coming off this uh, 3090 right now. We're getting 350 frames per second right now. And I'll just fly around here for a second and shoot some things. So let's see, in-game power draw, about 530 watts from what I see there. Remember this is a 750 watt power supply, so we're still way under that. I have the frame rate limiter turned off for this game. GPU temp is sitting at 68. I am curious what our CPU is doing. Let's see if I can just... Uh... So max our CPU has seen so far is uh, 81, 81C. And we're currently sitting around 61C. And again, that's just a result of games not hitting CPUs in the same way that they are hit with like um, synthetic workloads and rendering and things where every corn thread is loaded. Anecdotally, there is quite a bit of heat coming out of these fans. This back little 92 mil fan here does actually seem to be doing something because the case is quite hot around this fan area. Fan, fan area. So now we're in Apex Legends. We'll just load into the firing range and we'll just bomb around for a minute. Hmm. So also anecdotally, my arm's getting hot. I think it's just the heat coming out of the back of the GPU. So again, CPU. Uh, have not seen above 86 degrees Celsius with it sitting right now around, well, if it fluctuates so fast, 55, 65. But the point is not sitting on thermal throttle and GPU, hottest we've seen is 74. Yeah, that's on the hotter side for sure. Um, I guess, I think these fans right now also are running off of the CPU temperature. So let me just go in and just turn them up and just see if that makes any difference. So with fan speed at 100%, we still saw a max of 86 degrees on the core. Our GPU, yeah, 
pretty much all the same. It's funny, the case is really hot right here. And if we go, what's right there, it's about this area right here. So there's a ton of heat kicking off this fan. And it's kind of almost bouncing off the side panel and maybe even just going into the CPU cooler here. So I'm wondering if it's not really going bottom to top airflow because of all these holes in both side panels. I wonder if a lot of air is just kind of coming in from here up and blowing out the top. And if there's actually not good airflow over the GPU, because yeah, also back on this side over here, this whole bottom area down here is hot. Yeah, this whole area here is hot. I wonder if I could fit another slim fan under the GPU. I think if I took the GPU out, mounted these in, and then put the GPU back in, I could probably fit them. It's just, would they make any difference once they're pressed right up against everything like that? I don't know. I guess that's something I'll have to test later. Okay, time to draw some conclusions for this thing. So overall, how it sits right now as a gaming PC, it's okay. We were kind of representing worst case scenario by turning off FPS limiters and stuff. So it was just, everything was just going as hard as it could to just render as many frames as possible. Realistically, if I was running this as a gaming PC, I would probably limit the frame rate to whatever the monitor refresh rate was. So for instance, if this was 175 Hertz refresh rate monitor, I would limit the in-game FPS to 175 frames. That way I'm not just rendering out extra frames that I can't even see anyway. There is somewhat of a latency benefit that if you do render those extra frames above 175 Hertz in this example, that you may see like actually reduced latency from rendering more frames. However, in this case, with this high of powered hardware in a limited kind of cooling setup like this, I think it makes more sense to limit the FPS in the games to what your monitors are, just so that maybe the GPU is only running at 60% load or something instead of 100%. Unless you're playing at 4K or ray tracing, then this thing is still gonna have issues. I think the next step for me with this PC anyway is to install those slim fans under the GPU and just see if we can push a little air over the GPU area because the bottom of the actual case was getting hot, like the actual steel which tells me that heat is coming off the card and it's not able to go anywhere. And I have mentioned this at some point or another, but I'm not recommending this as a gaming PC. I would not put a 7950X in an ITX case strictly for gaming. However, for content creation, we did show a little bit of that today as well, and it's fine, it does work. It is gonna be sitting at that AMD limit of 95C, which you may or may not be okay with. If you really want to make this work, yes, you can tweak, you can do a little bit under volting, but that's just what I think about this. I would love to know what you guys think about this build. I've tried to do my best kind of showing off what it is and how it performs and stuff. I kind of just threw a few different applications and things at it, looked at a couple numbers and drew some conclusions. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe consider getting subscribed if you're not already. I did recently get an Intel Arc A770 GPU, so I will be doing a few tests with that and stuff. And also that is going to be going into an ITX case with a more reasonable lower powered Intel CPU that's probably a couple generations old. So that about does it for this one guys and we will do something different in the next video.